Welcome to a Land Rover guide to the Land Cruiser. The body of the Land Cruiser is pretty much the most obvious difference with the Land Rover because it's what it actually looks like. Um, they're very, they're kind of similar because they're trying to do the same job, but at the same time, they're pretty different. They look pretty different. I think overall, the the look of a Land Cruiser is just a bit geeky and awkward. Whereas a Land Rover kind of looks the part, and it's partly why Land Rover has still been quite successful as as safari vehicles because they just look the part. I guess it's part of people's, particularly in Britain, their their, their culture of uh, Africa and, and the idea and the vision that they've had with various films over time, particularly Born Free, things like that, where um, it just feels like the right vehicle because of the look. I mean, a Defender on the front. It's kind of, I mean, a lot of car designers talk about the look and the personality of a car. Um, a Defender, it's got quite a nice kind of cheeky, kind of friendly look on the front, and it's not really changed since the 80s. The Land Cruiser, on the other hand, kind of looks like a deranged android that's going to come and murder you in your sleep. It just looks a bit odd. It's not quite... No, it just looks a bit. It just looks a bit funny, really. Um, it's very Japanese style. The bonnet here is pretty massive, as the engine bay. It's pretty damn big. This thing's huge. Um, it's got a bit of a downward slope, and the biggest difference in the wings is these are a totally different design. Um, Land Rover naturally got its flat top wings here. Um, the Land Rover wings are great because you can step up like from the bumper or from the wheel. You can step up onto the flat wing and get to the roof rack really easily. You can also put stuff on it, lean on it. You know, it's really, it's really a good feature to have. The only downside with those wings is it, it's quite a bit distance to the edge of the edge of the engine bay to work on the sides of the engine bay. Um, Toyota doesn't have that. They've gone for keeping the engine bay trim down the front. Maybe that's a aerodynamic thing. I don't know. And then wings along here. These are still flat, um, and I have put tools here, but it's not ideal. They do tend to sort of slip off on these sides because it's not it's not completely flat. It's kind of angry. Um, these I don't know if they're going to be. They look like you want to sort of step up and put your feet on them or sit on them, but I don't think that's going to be able to happen. I don't think it's strong enough. It is kind of bolted under in here with a single in the skin um, but you don't really see people sat on Land Cruisers Land Rovers you'll see photos of people sat all over the bonnet and on the wings and things Land Cruisers you don't really get that um, it's not such a culture of being part of the vehicle so maybe that's part of Land Rover's appeal is it gets it, it sort of invites people to go and sort of sit all over it and it gives a good a good picture and it makes feel people it makes people feel like they're part of the vehicle, whereas a Land Cruiser doesn't really invite that, it's just like a car to some extent. This front panel is plastic and it's a bit easier than the Land Rover because it, it's only got four screws, one there, one there, same on the other side, and it just completely pulls off, which is actually good for maintenance to get into there. Land Rover's got eight, eight screws on the radiator panel at the front, three on each side and two down here. Um, it just takes a bit of time to get to the radiator, particularly if you're off-roading and you want to clear grass and stuff out of the radi radiator. Uh, headlights are about the same. Look about the same sort of size, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, and these indicator lights are just crazy. They look like they're something out of the 80s, but <laughs> they were put using these up until about 2007. Um, that was about what that was the main difference that happened in 2007 is that it got a bit of a bigger bump on the bonnet i imagine that's similar to what happened with defenders it was supposedly a pedestrian safety kind of thing they've got more more of a bouncy bonnet if someone wants to hit it hit on it and they've filled out the side so post 2007 70 series cruisers have got the wing down to the edge here it looks a lot better makes it look a lot wider and the headlights are more modern and integral with the it's like a, a complete unit integral around the side here 
This side repeater also looks like something from the Land Rover School of Design, which is choose whatever we can buy the cheapest and just bolt it onto the side. It kind of looks like that. Um, I find it a bit odd that this indicator's kind of got a side bit and they've got a side repeater as well. It's almost like doubling up in that respect. But, and they've got their badge on the side here and on the other side. There's Land Rovers on the back and then the logo on the front. What's a Jets? I would just refer to these because they're part of the body. Having them here, they just work brilliantly. You know, the adjustment is either going to... If you get the adjustment slightly wrong, it's either going to go here or here or here or here. Because the Land Rover ones are here, they're either going to go into here or sometimes hit underneath the windscreen wiper or they're just going to shoot over the top. And then, of course, there's the fact that when the wind blows, you know, you need to adjust them so they're pretty much shooting over the top so that at high speed they'll actually hit the middle of the screen. Um, which just means at a low speed you can't really use them that well, so it's really fiddly to get the adjustment right. Whereas these are, they've got a lot of tolerance, and then you know you can get them to hit here and here, and it's quite straightforward. Wipers are just like normal car wipers; they're quite effective. Got a large sweep, um, quite strong. Not much play in them. This scuttle panel is something you don't have on Defenders, and then the windscreen seal is quite substantial actually running all the way around. It's quite, you've still got a bit of corrosion in here like you would on the Land Rover, but I don't know how well these seal or not, but they look to be pretty good. The windscreen, same construction then as a, as a Land Rover, is it will be fitted in, it's not bonded in, it's fitted in with a rubber seal. Um, but it is slightly curved and it's a lot bigger, so it's probably a bit more of an expensive fix. Um, Land Rover is quite a cheap windscreen because it's just dead straight. So I imagine this has got better aerodynamics, aerodynamic qualities. Um, the main difference, now this is kind of constructed similar to a Land Rover's bolt-on, but the cab is pretty much made as one entire unit. And we've got the bonnet, side wings here, um, so the bulkhead and everything back, you'll just see these things sat on the side of the road, here in Malawi at least, as just completely replaceable units. The ones after 2007 are a bit different, but essentially they're just built like you would in any modern factory, like almost like in a truck factory where they build the entire cab. So what that means is we've got up around here, all around this area, anywhere basically from the roof downwards where you can get water, there are no joins. Which on a Land Rover you've got a join along here, you've got a join along here, you've got a join um, no down here, they've got the same ones down here, but you've essentially got no leak points all the way along here. And you've got gutter. Just a normal gutter, runs all the way down, it's going to run all the way down the side. In here, got no joins in here. Um, so, for leaks, I imagine this is pretty amazing, just like a modern car would be. Body panels are pressed, and they do what most normal cars do, is they, they, they're pressing almost like... They, well, they've created a design, and the pressing makes the shape of the vehicle, and then they put everything inside of that. So they've got the hinges inside here, like you would on a normal car in here. So that means you can make the shut lines a lot a lot smoother. Um, I guess that's one downside with the the defender is the hinges being on the outside it makes them uh, makes them a cosmetic item which means when they rust it's a problem. If these rust then who cares. I've never really seen much you get much play or wear on modern car hinges. Um, I assume the Lanco is probably similar but Land Rover you can get a lot of problems with adjusting the doors and the, and the hinges getting sloppy. But the thing is, if these rust or wear, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change the, the impact of the look of the vehicle. You can see in here, we've got the pressing structure and then the, the outer skin just sort of folds out um, beyond that. So the, the, the body is almost like a, a cladding system for the internal structure, whereas the Land Rover it's completely the same thing. It's structure first, and then, and then cladding second, which is what gives it its um, its look really. So the seals here run inboard on these sections here, whereas the Land Rover the seals will be part of the external cladding. Um, they're all integral, so that means it's working doubly hard. Here the seals are like normal car seals, and they actually run all the way round on the door. Uh, I mean, I've heard the ceiling on on the Land Cruisers is pretty good and they've just got this nice smooth seal land all the way around 
all the way around here. You know, but the door is exactly moulded to the bodywork. I mean, that's just going to be amazing. It almost makes it too easy, really, because you've got a vehicle that doesn't leak and doesn't let dust and dirt in. You kind of think if you've got a, a four-wheel drive that doesn't let water in and doesn't let dust in, what's the point of owning a four-wheel drive? Or at least that's the mentality you come from when you be a Land Rover owner. You kind of think that's part of the, pe the appeal, isn't it? Door handles are like a, just a modern car. Um, I wonder about these being a bit vulnerable and a bit liable to break because this is a bit of plastic and this is this bit's metal but this is plastic I think or maybe it's metal that's no, metal I don't know if these are liable to break because it's where well, it's metal and the, I've always felt that the, when you pull these they're going to come off in your hand they don't feel that substantial but they're actually protected by this pressing in the body so um, a bit similar to the lift up handles on on older defenders and military defenders defenders are quite liable to get bashed even though I've never seen one that's been damaged from off roading this is just designed to be a bit more protected and then you've got the strength in the pressing this ridge so this ridge kind of runs the length of the vehicle which is very similar to the defender in its design but it's actually got the, the, the two ridges here it's part of the characteristics I think of the Land Cruiser door lock operates just like a normal normal door and it doesn't really have any play this key is quite long it goes in quite a long way but the really weird thing is that this is unlocked at the moment. To lock this, I would naturally turn that way, but you don't. You've got to turn the opposite direction. So that's really unnatural. When I unlock the door, I've always got to come in and say, what's the way I think I would do it? Do it the opposite way. And that's the way it works. So that's a bit odd, just like with the, just like with the indicators and things. Japanese cars are the opposite way around. Maybe it's something with the key, the door lock as well. This is a nice feature. This is basically a ventilation for the cab. It's angled so that the air passing here as you drive will just naturally suck air out of the cab. Um, defenders don't really have that, so they have dust problems in the sense that it will just leak out of any area and dust will get sucked in. Whereas here, at least, if you put the, the fan on, you'll have positive pressure and then it gets sucked out there. So you've got a, a throughput of air going through, which will help stop dust getting in. Um, it's kind of a nice feature. So far as the rest of the body, it's a pickup. I've not really got any experience with pickups on Land Rovers. Um, so I don't know for comparison, but it, it just looks like a pickup body to me and it, and it operates the same way. I think Land Rovers are probably very similar. Um, this is a nice feature though. This is built into the body. And this is proper steel. So I think the, the body is mostly steel on these. Um, it pr it's pretty solid. I can't even pressing that or anywhere on the body so I imagine it's all steel construction so it's not going to get any kind of galvanic corrosion like you get on a Land Rover but then it's prone to rust but then more modern construction techniques don't really have a problem with steel these days and later Land Rover doors for, for example are, are steel as well so steel's come a long way in terms of a, a method of building body panels I imagine it's a lot cheaper as well than aluminium so this so if this, I just assumed that this would be a, probably an aluminium construction. So when I first looked at this, I was like, well, is that really going to take my weight? But this thing, it's totally solid. It's totally solid. So being part of the body, it's actually um, completely solid, nicely built. Um, it's really quite handy, actually, for getting up into the cab. The pickup is probably most similar to a high cap pickup in a Land Rover because it's got just the wheel arches that encroach into the pickup area. Um, normal pickups have just got the same back body tub but without the top essentially. Um, pickup area is quite big, I don't know for a direct comparison um, if it's bigger. I think it might be a bit longer than the Land Rover because these are quite long vehicles, the wheelbase is extended compared to other 70 series. Most pickups this is separated from the body so it's got its own kind of bushings and own so it's not going to squeak or rattle on the bodywork or cause any problems there. Um, I guess it's a good, it, I guess that's good because all the weight goes through this and damages these bushes, it won't then affect the cab by keeping them separate. Land Rover is just all entirely bolted together so I guess any damage or wear or extra load you put in the pickup is going to affect the cabin and the rest of the, 
Well, I guess on a Lander you don't actually have a cabin, you just have a bunch of body panels assorted together and bolted together. Um, here you've got a discrete cab, a discrete pickup, which makes it as mod modular, I guess, as a Land Rover could be. You could just get rid of this and put on some other kind of flatbed construction if you wanted to. Um, so that's not generally a bad idea. I think that's how most modern pickups are constructed. Back tailgate is um, full width, so compared to a Land Rover. Um, the Land Rover is just going to be here to here because of the, I guess, the restriction of the rear quarter panels. Um, this thing is meaty. Yeah. This thing is meaty. It weighs kind of a tongue. I guess it's supposed to have chains on there, but this one doesn't, so it just rests down here. Um, but that is that is a really solid pickup. You could rest a lot of heavy stuff on there quite quite easily. I don't know if a Land Rover's got an aluminium or a aluminium or a steel tailgate but um, this is certainly extremely strong. Um, back here, lights are all easily visible and they're quite big. The Land Rover's are, Land Rover lights are actually quite small. I think that's why people put NAS spec lights on them. Um, we've got to, this is the hole to get the, to lower the spare wheel. You put, the, put a bar in here and it hooks in and you unscrew it and it drops the spare wheel that's on a chain that's how a lot of cars do things particularly american cars um, tailgate up here and the land Rover ones are down here so this is probably a better place for the trailer pickup to go of course you're more likely to get probably station wagon 76 variant of the, the land cruiser um, main difference being that they have double doors and it's full width loading whereas land Rover is only about a meter so it's quite restrictive really what you can get in the back of a Land Rover. I don't generally have problems, I've got double mattresses in the back of a Land Rover before, but Toyota is going to provide a lot more space to be able to load the vehicle, which I guess is a plus. Um, but the rear of it, where the Land Cruiser looks a little bit odd compared to the Land Rover, the rear of a Land Cruiser just looks ridiculous, I think. It's just a bit, it just looks a bit odd. It's got like this fat overhanging belly, whereas the Land Rover is very kind of svelte and uh, it's got a good departure angle the Toyota just feels a bit odd around the back and it feels a bit sort of narrow and trim and the, the way the the, the ballot the kind of the way the body curves in at the top and around it just doesn't feel right what I've always said I've liked about Land Rovers is they have pretty much a square body so it comes here uh, long and it's square that makes it really easy to load stuff in you basically get more internal area of volume you basically get more internal volume you can put stuff in so it's really easy to load boxes in because they're flat up against the side with curved vehicles you can only bring to the box to about there and then you've got empty space down the side land cruisers tend to curve in a bit so that's one thing i've always said i've liked about land rovers i guess in practical terms you don't really ever have noticed that because you don't always stack boxes in vehicles it might be sacks or bags or stuff and they just tend to fill up the volume anyway but it's part of the character appeal, I think, of the of the Land Rover is its squareness. This is quite it's generally straight and bit curves in at the bottom, so it's got a bit of a, a design because this whole thing has been pressed. As the Land Rover is just like one sheet bit of metal, another sheet bit of metal. The Land Rover design is pretty much just a an example of its production process that's ended up in a design. Really, um, this at least having the more modern methods of of construction has at least enabled the design to be at least thought about and, and, and moulded as it were a little bit more but I don't think they've ended up with a vehicle that looks as good as a Land Rover. So all in all um, the body of a Land Cruiser is very different than a Land Rover and I think because they've used more modern production methods they've tried to make function follow form or at least give it some kind of styling but I think the styling has failed it's not really it's not really that good. Um, it doesn't look the same as a Land It just doesn't have the same appeal as a Land Rover. And maybe that is the appeal of a Land Rover, is that form follows function. They've tried to make the vehicle do what it needs to do first and foremost, and fit everything in around that, and make it as modular as possible. And you've got some disadvantages to that. You've got the seals, and the, you can't, you're not being able to get the seals to seal properly because everything's a little bit higgledy-piggledy, and there's, there's different points at which the body connects and gaps um, you need to fill with dum-dum strip or sealant 
Um, and also you can't curate the design of the vehicle as, as carefully because the shut lines are the seal points and everything is just integral. You know, you've, you need to, you're like, you've got a door in the bulkhead and you think, how do these go together? Oh, we need a hinge in there. I'll just stick it on the outside. It's that kind of, it's that kind of design process, but that's not, that's part of its appeal. That's not a bad thing because it's just, it makes it incredibly unique, which is why people like Land Rovers. And, and it just is what it is. And that's why Land Rovers are cool. They just are what they are. They're just unapologetic. Whereas this has been tried to be designed probably, you know, in the wake of, of Land Rover's success, Toyota tried to make the Land Cruiser and tried to make kind of their own and engineer something out of that. It's not quite worked. Um, there's a lot of practical benefits to this, which is generally what Toyota have done well, is they've made practical, good, reliable vehicles, but just doesn't have the that X factor, that sex appeal, or, you know, just that's something that, you know, the je ne sais quoi um, about it. Um, but you're going to have, a, you know, a less dusty, drier experience driving in a Land Cruiser. Click here to go to the next video. Right here. That's where the button is. Right there.